Loki, Season 1, Episode 5, Thoughts. So, once again, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, and IGN. So, let's see. So, yeah, the first two episodes have Loki in one historic event each. Yeah, what was this episode's special? I mean, a lot of it featured the Void, so that's that's special enough. Although, you know, obviously the Void will be in the final episode as well. I really like the Void. It's it's a it's a really cool concept. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. Although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man two, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. Now, I was trying to figure out if Episode 4 really was going to be an exception to that. Now, I, honestly, I, st I still love it. I can't... It's... Yeah, it's too good. And I... Yeah, and I love this episode as well. So, the episode is titled Journey into Mystery. I... I'm almost 100% certain that that's the name of a comic series that Thor, and I think also Loki, appeared in, you know, before Thor got his own comic book. That's the, you know, in, in comics, unlike in movies, you know, in, in movies you can, you can put out, you know, like the, when the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, a lot of people did not know the Guardians of the Galaxy at all, and they didn't, you know, Marvel didn't feel the need to introduce the Guardians in an already established title. You know, that, that was what they did with Hawkeye and Black Widow. They didn't get the solo movie, but... So, you know, sometimes the MCU does do it that way. And the camera... So, yeah, getting into the specific notes of the episode. The camera's upside down in the CDA, I guess saying that everything has been flipped on its head. Very cool establishing shot of the void with the Loki star. We see that some of the buildings have been knocked over. Not just, you know, it's not just a building is either standing or, or just, or demolished or flat. Some of them are like tilted. Okay, so that living cloud thing might be the coolest non human, you know, creature thing we've seen in the MCU so far. So. Yeah, really love that. And so we tries to get information out of Renslayer, who supposedly doesn't know. And by the end of this episode, either she doesn't know or she's doing a really good job pretending. You know, she seems to express not knowing, even when only talking to Miss Minutes. So, although then I guess maybe she's worried that Miss Minutes will, like... Ah, what's the word? You know, if Miss Minutes really is her own entity, maybe... Renslayer doesn't want Miss Minutes to know that she doesn't know. Yeah, it's it's possible. And as the Lokis walk across the field, Crocodile Loki is on the ground and even turns to face 2012 Loki when 2012 Loki shouts. I really like how much, like, you know, Crocodile Loki... You know, he's paying attention, he's reacting, he's speaking. I appreciate, you know, basically, let's see, I, I want to say it was classic Loki that understands Crocodile Loki and translates it for the other. Maybe, maybe he took Crocodile in, maybe it was an elective on Asgard, who knows. And the, you know, when, when the... I'm very briefly going to bring up the fairly unpopular movie, The Amazing Spider-Man 1. When the, you know, the, the people who made that made the decision, like, when, when the comics were made, I, I don't know if they just didn't know or if they just didn't care, but scientifically, like, it is demonstrably, it is not possible to speak if you don't have lips, you know, speak, ah, yeah, uh, speak human, speak a human language, you know, you can, you can't make, 
you know, just, like, like just, just try, try not moving your lips and forming words. You know, it just, it, it, yeah. Well, okay, you know, if you're a, if you're a ventriloquist, but ventriloquists do still have lips. You know, so a crocodile would not be able to form English words, for example, and they wanted the lizard to speak in the Amazing Spider-Man one. That's why they changed his head to be more humanoid, so that he would have lips. Because the comic book lizard, he's got the the liz, you know, yeah, regular lizard mouth, and in the, I'm almost 100 percent certain in the comics, the lizard speaks in lizard form. I don't know if they didn't know that you couldn't do that, or if they just didn't care. Either is fine by me, but yeah. It's confirmed that Crocodile Loki is a Loki. And Classic Loki translates for the others. Right. What was your nexus of it, Your Majesty? I killed Thor. And, you know, some of these great people say that, well, maybe he maybe he pulled that trick that 2012 Loki, you know, in, in, in Thor Ragnarok, we're told that 2012 Loki has, you know, he, he tried to stab Thor when they were eight. Maybe Kid Loki succeeded in stabbing his Thor to death. And as the Lokis climb down the hatch, in, into the hatch, Throg, aka Frog Thor, is stuck in a jar, unable to get to Mjolnir buried in the dirt. That's, that's really, really great. And it's like, as far as the comics go, if he got to... Mjolnir, let's see, I'm not certain he would turn back to a human being. No, yeah, I, th I think he would just get get to use his Thor power. You know, I, I'm, I guess maybe in frog form, Thor can't use his powers. Yeah, the, the lightning and such powers without the hammer, or maybe he just doesn't know that yet. He needs, what he needs is for frog Odin to confront him and say, what are you, Thor, Throg, the god of hammers? But that's a, that's, yeah, such a great Easter egg. I really, they, they are going far out there. The, the, some people have also spotted the, the Thanos copter in the void. So, yeah, they really, the, the, the most ridiculous parts of the comics may now appear in the MCU, even though some of them only in stuff like The Void. So, apparently there is, you know, Thanos had a Thanos copter, and maybe only the copter, but maybe both were pruned in that version. If Desmond is down in that hatch, inputting the numbers to a computer, I'm going to be very annoyed. And we see Miss Minutes again. And she has to search through the files going really far back because she has to go back to the start of time. And it seems like she can't get any shortcuts along. Like, she has to go, like, alphabetically or chronologically or something. And... And so he thinks that Renslayer's lying about the void spacecraft, but some guards show up and... You know, Miss Minutes was just going along with the lie that Renslayer started. Searching, searching, still, searching, file located, oops, caught her fingers. What? She has hands. And Sylvia proves herself. She was just going to go there anyway. She just, you know, if there happened to be a Void spacecraft for it, she would prefer that, but... And boastful Loki claims he went full Thanos, defeated the Avengers, and got all Infinity Stones. And none of the others believe him, not one. And Crocodile Loki was pruned for eating the wrong neighbor's cat. So classic Loki actually did what some people had guessed. He only pretended to die at the hands of Thanos in Infinity War at the start. The adult Lokis, including Alligator Loki, he's he's soaking in, in the kiddie pool, are drinking wine or something, but Kid Loki has a juice box because he's not of age yet. I mean, okay, this is a world with magic and, you know, a void and, and this giant creature that's like a, a cloud, but there's not going to be underage drinking. Let's not get completely crazy here. That would be unreasonable. And, you know, these great people pointed out the juice box he's got is, like, 
Ecto Cooler and it's like Slimer from the animated Ghostbusters. If it lives, it dies. Hmm. Counterpoint, if it blows itself up, you'll have to get to that chopper. And, you know, 2012 Loki lays out his plan, and all of the Lokis, including, I think, Crocodile Loki, laugh at him. That's really, like... <laughs> I've seen a lot of things in a lot of different movies, but I've never seen an alligator laugh. And President Loki and a bunch of other Lokis arrive at the hatch. I... If I had to criticize one thing, I would have liked more President Loki, but it's not impossible that he'll appear in the last episode, I guess, but yeah. And Sylvie's chased by Eliath, and she manages to... I mean, it was almost like by accident or by, by reflex. She, she enchanted it and found a memory, found the, the castle inside of it, and that's how she knows for later. And Mobius drives Sylvia away, so this really is where everyone currently goes, not only Loki's. You're one of you. And Mobius goes all like dad, and get, he's, he's like, you know, you really shouldn't get in a car with a stranger. And all of the Lokis betray each other, and Alligator Loki bites off President Loki's right hand. Very cool, massive fight between all the Lokis and 2012 Lokis, just trying to avoid them all and not fight. And Classic Loki really can cast a spell. Like, he gets a lot of the Lokis to fight his illusion. I mean, it's not like they don't know that Lokis can cast illusions. I appreciate that Mobius really does accept that the TVA was terrible and is apologizing to Sylvia, although... You know, he, he's, he's like, I mean, you were doing really awful things, but you still, yeah. I really appreciate that the car isn't just any car, but it has, like, a big rubber pizza piece bouncing back and forth on top. Like, obviously, it used to be a pizza delivery car, and, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, delivered a pizza to the wrong address or something? Like, the really, like, for serious wrong address, like... College humor, there is actually a wrong way to eat. An Oreo, I think it is. That, you know, that level of wrong. And, you know, the, the Lokis were going along with 2012 Loki. They were like, okay, sure, 2012 Loki's plan. And then Sylvia's like, you want to kill him? Really? And immediately the Lokis are against it. I guess all of them have a weakness for Sylvie. I like seeing that Hunter B-15 apparently isn't... I, I thought she was prone, but apparently she's, she's just in a cell. And Renslayer asks for the files, and Miss Minutes is going to work on it, but it is, you know, that's, that's a mighty tall order. And Loki and Sylvie try connecting, and apparently, like, you know, the, the, one of these great people pointed out that he's, you know, he claims to be cold, but he's a frost giant. He should be used to cold. So him, you know, using the, the, ah, I forget what it's called, but the magic to create the, the, ah, what's it called? The, the blanket for both of them. It's just an excuse to get close to him. And... The, the crashed ship of Ronan, the Dark Aster, is on the left side of the screen under the cloud when all of them are looking at the cloud, so that's really cool. And Mobius takes the time portal. What would you do with the TVA? Burn it to the ground. Thanks for the spark. And Loki and Sylvie head for Eliath, and the other Lokis are not going near Eliath. And it looks like Eliath was going to attack Sylvie, but Classic Loki saves her by conjuring up a massive illusion of Asgard. And again, like, it's convincing. Eliath actually buys it. And Loki and Sylvie both enchant Eliath at the same time. And Classic Loki is done for, but, 
you know, one of the Easter egg people pointed out, he's like, he's he owns this episode. Like, he gets character development. You know, early on, he's like, I can't believe, are, are we really doomed to always, you know, betray each other? And, and here, by the end of the episode, he does exactly the opposite. He sacrifices himself for others. And Loki and Sylvie go towards Eliath and the building inside, and the episode ends. So, you know, in WandaVision there was talk of a vessel that could break through the hex and, you know, be useful in this really unique situation. And now in this episode, Renslayer pretends there is a vessel that could help in Void be useful in this unique situation. Does someone making these shows either really like that idea and someone else keeps shutting them down? or dislike the idea, and that's why it keeps not working out. So let's make a list of all the questions that are either answered in the final episode of the season or simply will not be answered this entire season. Who is behind the TVA? Does Rensselaer really not know? What exactly is Ms. Minutes? What are her limits? Does whoever is behind the TVA actually believe that they're doing good, or are they just seeking out a selfish goal, such as, for example, getting rid of all the Lokis. And if so, is it a Loki behind the TVA? Does the multiverse really not exist? Will it by the end of Season 1? Is Kang in Season 1 of the show? Who is that hiding inside the cast and satellite? To be fair, that's probably the, the, ans the answer to that is probably who is behind the TVA. That, that would be a pretty good place to hide, you know. They're, they're, they're safe in there. If they can affect... I guess they might be a, an exile of the TVA, actually. Uh, anyway. What Nexus event is it that Sylvie creates by her very existence? Is the TVA really inside the Quantum Realm? What, if anything, will happen if the TVA is disbanded? And uh, on, on the TVA being inside the Quantum Realm, you know, it's been pointed out that if you look closely, you can see Chronopolis, Kang's city of time, inside the Quantum Realm in, I'm almost certain it's Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not one of the, you know, that's, it does very briefly appear in the first Ant-Man, and it does, and I, don't we also get a brief glimpse of it in... Endgame, but I'm, I'm, I believe it's Ant-Man and the Wasp. When, when, um, when Hank is is traveling in there in his craft. So the uh, and parts of Chronopolis look like the uh, right. No, no, what was the other thing? Part, uh, the magic, the the time portals, and other stuff the TVA uses somewhat looks, you know, the, they have similar colors to the Quantum Realm. I think those were the whole. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm really excited for the finale, you know, so, so let's see. A number of people were dissatisfied with the finale of WandaVision, the finale of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, and I guess I can understand why people were unhappy with the WandaVision one. See, to me, it's just, yeah, okay, this is this is definitely an MCU finale. You know, you've got, you know, these massive battles, the, the protagonist faces off against the villain, and, you know, maybe they have fairly similar power sets and, and abilities. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it, there's a lot more. It's it's very different from the first, from from the from the episodes that are full sitcom, and there's you know there, there's way more action in that one episode than in all the other episodes combined. And and some people, you know, and and Agatha turned out not to be as, what's the word, as developed or as complex of a villain as she seemed like she might. You know, there at the end, it's very one note. But that's kind of an MCU climax, you know. A lot of the villains are fairly, are are not as developed as would be nice. And yeah, there's a lot of action, and then it ends. I have a harder time understanding why people have issues with Captain America and the Winter Soldier. 
the, the finale. I, I, I personally really love the finale. Some people felt that, that uh, John Walker, it was too much of a redemption for him. I can, I can kind of understand that, but I, I'm, I'm awaiting what they're going to do with John Walker next. If what they do with John Walker next is just meh, then I'll be like, oh, come on, you redeemed him for this? But it seems like they have a plot. They're going somewhere with, you know, so, so anyway. Yeah, so. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see if I love the, the season one finale. There is apparently going to be a season two of this. But they have a lot of quests in the stands. I, I, I just really hope it's not going to be just 20 or 30 minutes of non-stop exposition explaining what's happened and explaining this is that and that thing works like this and all these things and that it also doesn't leave a million questions unanswered. So there you go. That was the thing I wanted to... WandaVision definitely left some questions unanswered. By the, by the end of the finale, there are still some questions that we'd like answered. However, that is leading to Doctor Strange 2. I, get, I think they'll answer at least some of those questions in Doctor Strange 2. And if they left no questions unanswered, then what's Doctor Strange 2 going to do? You know, th there has to be some kind of revelation in, in the... So, so, yeah. However, if this one doesn't answer these questions, I mean, I guess, okay, there's season 2, so that's... I have to wonder if season 2 is going to be... If they're going to do, like, how Prison Break, like, season 1 and season 2 of that show are drastically different... You know, so I, I think that could work. I think it could work if season two, if they, if the TVA is disbanded by the end of season one, and then season two, you have jumping around different parts, you know, time travel and such, but there's no longer a TVA. You know, I, I, there, there's, there's interesting things they could, they could do there. And it's also possible that it won't have time travel. Maybe it'll just, you know, I, I, maybe it could be like jumping between the different parts of the multiverse, but not necessarily in time. But but yeah, so what I'm saying is I'm excited, and I hope you are too. And that's it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.